One of the most common arguments I hear from Trinitarians against the oneness theology, the oneness Godhead model, is that of Jesus' prayers. If Jesus was the Father, why would he have to pray to the Father? Well, um, this argument actually works on our behalf. In fact, Trinitarian scholars, those that understand the Trinitarian doctrine the best, they'll stay away from this argument altogether. They won't use it because they understand it actually works against the Trinitarian Godhead model. Uh, the Trinitarian model is this. You have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, three separate individuals, three people who make up this corporate being that is God. Well, here's why that argument doesn't work. In prayer, lesser always prays to greater. Uh, subservient has to pray to dominant. Man prays to God. So if they're co-equal, if Jesus is equal with the Father and with the Holy Spirit, they don't have to pray to each other. They're co-equal. They don't need each other's permission. They're co-equal. They don't need each other's uh, divine intervention. They're co-equal. He's just as uh, as divine as the Father, just as much God as the Holy Ghost. Uh, there's no, There would be no need to pray there. So that's why it doesn't work for the Trinitarian model. Uh, this is an area that actually Trinitarians and oneness folks agree on. Uh, the Trinitarian scholars agree with us on this and we agree with them that it's something called the hypostatic union. We believe that Jesus is a hundred percent God but he is also a hundred percent man. What that means is he had to sleep, he had to eat, he had to drink, he had to uh, get proper nutrition and get proper exercise. He needed a relationship with God. He needed to pray. Uh, he wasn't God pretending to be a man. He was God become a man. But God cannot uh, become uh, mortal. So you had the one true and living God and Jesus Christ, the man, uh, two separate modes of existence in that one body. The The Bible says that the Word became flesh, the will of God, the uh, one true and living God, which was spirit, became flesh and dwelt among us to become our perfect sacrifice. The Bible says that uh, all the fullness of the Godhead dwelled in Jesus Christ bodily. He is the one true living God become flesh. He has just revealed himself to us and interacts with us uh, in three separate ways, uh, as the Father in creation, as the Son in redemption, as the Holy Ghost in regeneration. When you get to heaven, you're going to see one throne in heaven, as John saw in Revelation, uh, if you'll read that, that, that book. He saw one throne, and one who sat upon the throne, and it was Jesus Christ. He is the one true and living God made flesh. He's the only God you'll ever see. There is none but Him. He is God all by Himself.